Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the underground lair here at Stringman Guitars. Guitars. Um, no incoming work because we've got the COVID stuff dealing that we're dealing with. So, time to work. Give my my own instruments some uh, love. These strings have been on this thing for probably a year. I really haven't been playing it much because I'm primarily playing bass. So how are you guys dealing with all this stuff? It's been a pain in my ass because I'm typically an Uber and Lyft driver. Which means, and I'm a heart transplant recipient, which means I can't do Uber and Lyft for risk of picking somebody up that has the disease. Since uh, I take all these anti-rejection meds which lower my immune system. So I'm stuck at home. At first Uber was going to pay those of us that had doctor letters saying stay at home. And then they reneged, changed the language after several people in my condition applied. They said, oh no, we're not going to do that. And I'm not going to take any guitars in off the streets that have, uh, that have had, you know, who knows what their owner had. So I'm left to my own devices between this and calling the unemployment office it's been a freaking joy so um, just doing my um, this is my seagull um, S6 GT which means gloss top um, it's probably one of the best sounding acoustics you're going to find. Um, Martins are very nice. Gibsons are very nice. Some of your, your uh, hoity-toity brands are very nice. But for the money, this thing sounds, to my ear, which I'd say is pretty good, as good as any Gibson I've had, or Taylor, or Martin, I've had in my shop. This Cherry Sides and Back Engelman Spruce Top. It's made in Canada. Shaler Tuners has um, Graftech tusk saddle and nut everything was good right out of the box um, so yeah it's a beautiful guitar I just haven't had a chance to play it much lately uh, I've been playing around with some uh, recording stuff since I've been stuck at home and kind of like to get back to sounding better so that's why we're doing this don't particularly like dead, dead sounding spring springs strings so once a year I'll go ahead and clean the, the fingerboard fretboard, whatever you all want to call it. I use symbol green just because it's not harsh and takes all the oil from when it was played off of it.
So, yeah, when I do my, uh, when I do acoustics, um, some brands like to keep their, um, their uh, brid bridge pins in a certain order based on the thickness of the strings. Um, my thoughts on the issue are that, yeah, you know, your, your strings are going to be held in there for a long period of time with that particular, pe that particular uh, pin, so it's going to conform to that size. So it just makes sense to keep it the same, right? Right. They just need polished up. There are starting. I'm starting to get some some dents in the uh, B and E spot on the first three frets. The B on the fourth fret. I've had it for about four years. And I use a uh, crimson fret erasers, they call them fret rubbers. Whatever. Goofy European people. <laughs> so, yeah. Take off some of the corrosion. Make it feel much better. And, and clean the body a little bit here. These are really thin. Um, polyurethane. Well, no polyurethane is going to look to wood breed, but. Uh, Thin polyurethane is going to allow it to allow the body to vibrate better, if you will. Okay, so we're going to go with some F1. I'm not going to put this on the grill, so we're not going to marinate it. Just enough to moisturize it so it doesn't crack. See how bad the uh, finger or fretboard was, fingerboard, whatever you want to call it. So, wipe it in, wipe it off. Yeah, the fretwork on this is immaculate, right from the day I got it. They must really dry their, the wood at uh, 
their shop up in Canada. You can get a American-made Fender Telecaster or Strat or whatever. You know, two thousand bucks, and it'll have a sharp fret in. It's like what the hell? So. I've not picked up a seagull that has had fret sprout either. All right. That oh, feels beautiful. We're going to go with. My last set of Diodario Phosphor Bronze. One of the things that um, I'll show you that I learned from Taylor. No, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. I think Taylor's actually uh, designed her. their pegs this way but um, if you put your string in there you give it a little bit of a yank and just kind of tighten it up for you so you don't have to worry about that popping out so I'm going to go ahead and string this up and be right back alright so I've had a lot of people bring their guitars to me and say you know on electrics, the uh, G, B, and E don't like to uh, stay in tune. On acoustics, the B and E don't like to stay in tune. That's because they're not wound, or you know, they're they're, they're plain strings. <coughs> and what you need to do is you need to get enough wraps on the post, at least four or five, so that they won't slip. Because you know, plain spring has got nothing to grab onto so another thing I don't know if, if it'll pick it up in the camera here but what I do is I'll put the string uh, I'll have the um, the post holes set at an angle like so take it up and back the string and then that way so it's like a Z And you want it away. See how many lines we get on this thing. You don't want them to be all over the top of each other either. I got about five so that's that string won't slip on you whenever you're playing and find yourself that you're in I'm almost out you know in the middle of a song I'm out of tune so that's my method for wrapping the posts and how to keep them secure when you're trying to you know, guide them on to the posts, the strings. So, anyhow, I'm going to tune it up to pitch. We'll check our, our measurements and so forth. Okay, we're all strung up. I leave all these guys on there until I'm done. Capo on the first fret. Hold on at the last fret. And Seagull calls for 12 thousandths of, of an inch of relief at the seventh. And we have got just a hair more than that. Or a hair less, I should say, because I'm I can see the 
I slide that under there. The string is moving just a little bit, but if we grab a 10, and there's all kind of room under there for a 10. So it's probably about 11. We check our tuning. Try to stretch these strings in a little bit already. There's some contention on as to whether or not the plain uh, strings stretch. They don't. They get a little thinner whenever you pull them and you get to a certain point of their tensile strength and they will break. So, why do you try to stretch the, the um, plain strings out? Because all the wraps on here, you want to make sure they're tight. So, bring all this back up to pitch again. So, let's see if there's any fret buzz anywhere. Size a little bit. Oh, look at that mess. Can you see that? Fred must have been rolling on it when he was playing it earlier. By the way, the Godan electronics in this, I think, are also spectacular. My only complaint on this guitar is the battery box location. Being on the heavy side, as you can see, um, when I'm holding this with a strap, the strap comes right across there. I don't like that. They could have put that somewhere else. Didn't need to be there. So anyhow, if you guys see, if you like what you see here, and I've had pretty much every major brand in here. If you like what you see and you want to learn other tips and tricks. Please like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook under Stringman Guitars. Um, and yeah, when this mess is all over, if you need your axe made sharp again, hook me up. Hit me up on Facebook. And uh, until then, check on your elderly neighbors, your parents. Um, check on your family. Check on 
people that you know in your neighborhood that don't have anybody and be good to each other. Peace. Have a great rest of your weekend.